When towing, you rely on this lead to ensure that the brake indicator and all of the other running lights on the caravan operate correctly. But it can actually get damaged. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to avoid it dragging on the ground and getting damaged. And also, in the case that it does get damaged like that, how to repair it in an emergency. Hi, it's Dave T here, and before we get into how to repair a damage lead, let's talk first about how to avoid that happening in the first place. Because the connection between the caravan and the tow vehicle flexes, then you do need to have slack in the cable. And this slack is taken up when you turn one direction and increased when you turn in the other direction. It's worth pointing out at this point that there are two different types of cables. The older style cable has two cables and two plugs and sockets. They are thinner and tend to be more flexible and tend to drag more often and not hold their shape. On the other hand, the more modern plugs like this have the 13 pin connector, a much thicker cable, much stiffer, and therefore if you direct it in an arch, it will tend to stay that way. So that will help. The second way of avoiding this issue is to actually tie the cable in some way so that it encourages that arch to go up. Now that can be by putting a loose piece of a string or something around the cable and the jockey wheel for example just to get it heading in the right direction so that it's going to go up and over rather than down and under that way. But what you must do is ensure that there's still enough slack that should you make a sharp turn in the direction away from the socket then there's sufficient slack to still be able to reach otherwise you'll find you're having other problems if you tie it too securely. So I'd recommend anything you do should be uh, enough to hold it but not enough so that if it's under tre tremendous strain it doesn't give way. So with that said about how to try and avoid this happening let's look at how you can actually repair it if it does get dragged along the ground but before I do that I need to find myself a damaged cable. One quick point here is if this has happened there is a chance that, that it will cause a short which will blow a fuse so it's worth if you still have a problem after fixing this it's worth checking or relevant fuses in the car and also the caravan to see if that is an additional problem that's been caused by this happening. I'm doing this on a bench because it's more convenient especially for filming this will obviously have to be done in situ a way of repairing this and this is a temporary repair is we can use these which are basically crimp connectors. Um, you can get these from pretty much any automotive supplier. You often get them in motorway service stations, places like that, so they're quite easy to get hold of. If you buy them in a kit, which is probably how they'll come in a motorway service station, then it'll probably come with a pair of crimp tools like this. These, as crimp tools, they will do the job. They're a bit naff. I'm probably gonna use this more beefy one because it's just easier to use, but both will do exactly the same job. If you do buy a kit, it will have a selection of different types of these. It will have probably spade connectors and ring connectors and all sorts. The problem with that is you may find you don't get many of the straight through connectors. So these are just straight through. A wire goes in one side and the other side, as you'll see, to connect it up. You may not get many of those if you buy a kit. So you may need to buy some extra of the straight throughs, depending on how many cores are actually damaged. You'll need one of these for each core. You could technically do it with two connectors. So for example, you could use a bullet type connector. So you've got a male and a female connector and these then go together. That just adds extra joints. So you can use those at a pinch. So if you've got a set which has three, if you need six of them, you've got three of the straight throughs and three of these bullet sets or pairs, then you can do it that way as well. Tool wise, you can need, as I say, some form of crimping tool some form of side cutters, 
possibly pliers but unlikely you may need uh, may find that a knife is useful um, and also some kind of wire stripping tool again you can use normal side cutters to um, strip the wire this is just more convenient so that's what I'll use here uh, but you can equally just do it with these it's just more awkward to do so let's crack on what we need to do first of all is obviously I can't repair these as they are so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the black insulate outer insulation around this section so let's do that first be careful here do not cut one of the inner cores okay so now We've separated off the outer sheaf so you can see we've just got the cores inside so what I'll do is I'm going to pull these back a bit further again very careful not to cut the inner cores you can do that with a knife but be very careful because you're far more likely to cut the inner cores now you could leave this on to give you a bit more protection for the final finished joint I'm going to move it out of the way mainly for filming purposes so you can see what's going on same on the other side okay so as you can see here what we now have is we've moved the black sheaf and we've got these inner wires and what you need to do is check each of these visually to make sure that none of them are damaged we've got these two cables which are quite obviously damaged these two here so now we need to repair those so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this kind of in the middle or yeah so now we've got that cut what I then need to do is you can use it's easier with these wire strippers if you can get it in off like that okay so we've got one end there and then the other end here some of these have actually been worn away so I'm going to cut it back just to show you don't necessarily need one of these do it with the side cutters just need to carefully don't press too hard crimp it around and you can do it that way as well you're more likely to have a set of side cutters rather than a wire stripper so now we've got both of these like this need to get our connector wire's a bit long here so I'm going to trim it and what I'll then do is crimp it so we've got a crimped end there and what I recommend is not doing this end yet because that's going to pull it together and make it more awkward for this one so let's do let's now do the second broken wire the other one is the black wire so we're going to cut these goes without saying it is absolutely critical that you connect together the same colored wires yeah all of the wires should be different colors and it's absolutely critical that you do black to black blue to blue yellow to yellow etc uh, do not mix them up so make sure you double check that so just trim that off to cut that a little bit shorter if you feel resistance just kind of like twist it slightly and that tends to help it go on I'll do this using the other more common style of these as I say these aren't as good obviously as the other ones I was using 
you just basically want to squeeze that on these ones for any reason squeeze it as hard as you can give it a tug make sure that's connected so that's all fine okay so now we're at the point where we need to actually connect these together So the final one in this case, as I say, because I did this by test one, I haven't ground all the way through, there's just two wires. You could find there's many more wires, but either way the same principle applies, it's just going to take you longer to do it. As you can see, for obvious reasons, these two are now shorter than the rest of the cables. So you will get a lump where the rest of them have to take a little diversion around it. Okay, So what you now want to do is the uh, final piece of... So the final thing that you actually need is then basically to tape it up. So you're going to need some insulation tape. Colour doesn't really matter. probably want black. It's just uh, my black insulation tape at the moment is somewhere else. So I'm going to use the red and it will show up better on camera anyway. Basically, just going to wrap around here, and you just want to use as much as this as you can, really, just to seal it up and give it some additional strength. So, this is not particularly elegant, it's not a or shouldn't be a long term solution, but it's something which will get you running if you can't get the caravan to an actual uh, garage or somewhere where that's going to be able to actually do a proper repair because the proper way to repair this is obviously going to be to take the wire out entirely and, and run a new piece of uh, 7 or 13 core whatever cable into the plug that goes into the back of the van and back all the way into the um, board that receives it in the caravan okay so ideally you want to replace this cable entirely um, and that's probably something you want to get a caravan engineer or dealership or whatever to do for you but if you're stuck and need to stay on the road legally this will enable you to connect it so that uh, your lights and everything else are working and as i say all of the tools here so the pliers uh, crimp connectors, basic crimping tool, all of that sort of stuff is very easy to get hold of at most garages, certainly anything like Halfords or anywhere similar, even supermarkets, I've seen supermarkets sell kits like this. So that's one way to keep yourself um, on the road uh, and legal in terms of lights and so on, but it's a temporary fix, get it repaired correctly as soon as you can.